So when I was a kid, I used to go to Hunter Park all the time. Uh -huh. And when you walked in the little rec center there, I believe it was to the right, there was the a display right. case. Uh -huh. Yes. And one of you had a picture in there. It wasn't you, it was you. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Harper, Atlanta Braves, uh -huh. local hero. Well, thank you very so much. So I, I remember that from, from my days up at Hunter Park, probably, I don't know, four or five years old on up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it is a pleasure to have you on the show today with us. Thank you very so much. So introduce yourselves to uh, our lovely viewers at home. My name's Mike, Mike Anderson with uh, Anna Grace Trucking, and I'm, I'm on the board of in Infinity Sports Connection here to give back. And of course, Terry Harper, mm -hmm. and, and how are you involved? Well, um, I got involved with uh, Kevin uh, Keevy. Uh, we was actually working out at uh, LA Fitness, uh -huh. and um, we got to talking, and it turned out he was going up to Dominican and doing some stuff with his basketball kids. And uh, we got talking about baseball, and then everything, uh, Infinity Sports Connection kind of grew from there. That's awesome. And we're going to talk more about Infinity Sports Connection, their nonprofit here, in just a little bit. But as you know, we got to cook too. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> so, what are we cooking today? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> they have no idea what we're cooking, obviously. We have our ingredients cloaked in our beach towel of deception, uh -huh. is what we call it. So what I'm gonna do is reveal the ingredients to you and let you try to guess what we're cooking. All right. Y'all ready? Is this okay. kind of like chopped? <laughs> yeah, basically. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. And Let's you can see. move anything around you want, take a look, see, uh -huh. see if you can figure out what we're cooking. It is two recipes. Oh. And you're not gonna be able to guess, but do your best. <laughs> Gumbo. Nope. I would say gumbo too, but you said nope. <laughs> uh, I have no idea. <laughs> Cornmeal. Oh dear. So let me, let me give you a hint. This is the main ingredient in one of the recipes we're doing. Some type of cornbread? Very good, yes. All right, so we got one. <laughs> mm, I'm, I'm stunned. I, I have no idea. I'm going to let you off the hook. Yeah, what is that? I, I don't even know. That. <laughs> what is that? Jerry? Yeah, um, <laughs> it kind of like a tomato, but then it looked like something. Yeah, it kind of looks fruit. like a pear, too. Pear, right? pear, yes. All right, so I'll, I'll let you off the hook. So we like to have theme for the show, right? Um, and with you guys, you go to the Dominican. You bring the Dominican players over. So mm -hmm. we're doing Dominican food today. Awesome. All right. Yes. Awesome. Yes, so uh, I'm going to have to look at the recipe to pronounce these things. So uh, the first thing we're going to cook is the cornbread, but it's called arepa salad arepa. or salada. Uh, okay. And it's, it's their version of cornbread. Cornbread, okay. okay. And then the second recipe is teota guisada con langaniza. And basically what that means is it's like a stew with uh, pork sausage, mm -hmm. and their version is called longaniza. Uh, and over here we have chorizo, so that will should work fine. Oh. Uh, and then this, this weird thing here, this is chayote. Chayote. But they call it teota. So the, in different mm -hmm. places in the Caribbean, they have different names for it. Mm -hmm. This is very interesting. I, I had an extra when I cut it up last night to, mm -hmm. to taste it because I'd never had it before, and it is very, very interesting. And it tastes very good, too. So apparently they use it in stews, mm -hmm. soups, that kind of thing. Okay. So that's what we're doing today. Yeah, that's a long way from pizza and yeah. like ham that I ate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, we're getting a little creative and gourmet today. Awesome. So we're going to talk about your nonprofit here in just a minute, and we're going to get started with our first recipe. We'll be right back. All right, we're set up to do the first recipe. We're going to do the corn meat, and I'm going to call it uh, cornbread. I'm going to call it cornbread because it's hard to arepa salada. We'll just uh, say cornbread. Cornbread. Yeah, okay cornbread sounds All right, good. All right, so first thing we got to do, we're going to be baking it, so uh, we need a nice container for to put the, the ingredients in once we get them prepared. Uh, but we don't want it to stick. We want it to come out pretty well. Okay. So. 
I'm gonna get one of you guys to take this and you're just gonna butter this dish just like that. Paint the bottom okay. and then paint the sides with it. Got it. And while he's doing that, I'll get you to open up these three cans of coconut milk. We're gonna be using three and a half cups of coconut milk, three and a half cups of the chicken's broth over there, and then two cups of cornmeal and salt, some parsley, that kind of stuff. I've got a pot getting hot over here for our ingredients. And what happens in, in this particular recipe, uh, normally in cornmeal, the way we do it here in the South especially, we'll take an iron skillet, put some oil in it, get it just smoking hot in the oven, prepare our ingredients, pull that pan out, put the ingredients in and it likes to fry the bottom, gets nice and crispy. Mm -hmm. uh, well, this one is a little different. You will actually cook the ingredients here in the pot first and thicken it. And then you, almost like grits. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. And then we will pour it into here and bake it. So, how are those cans coming over there? Well, we had a little bit of an operator <laughs> problem, but I think I have it now. All right. Hopefully you can get that one off. We'll figure it out. There, there we go. Yeah. And we, that's a lot of coconut milk. That is, I was expecting it to mm. be runny. It tastes mm -hmm. good. There is uh, some runniness down in the bottom, is I'm there? sure. Yeah. Okay. It kind of separates. So, if you will, measure out three and a half cups into here of the coconut milk. And I will get you a spatula just in case we need it to get the milk out. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> Terry, did I splash you? No, no. <laughs> you scared me more than... I think uh, us in the kitchen is pretty scary, isn't it, Terry? <laughs> yes, it is. We're going to have a good time, though. <laughs> All right, Terry. All right, so I'm that's about, up here. that's one and a half cups. So two of those will be three, and then we only need a little bit of the other one. Come on out of there, guy. <laughs> oh. There we go. Oh. How much is that? Yeah, that's that's, that's right over almost three. at three. That's yeah, at three? Yeah, a little bit over three. That's, uh, that's uh, almost three and a half. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just use that then. We'll put Pretty that fun. in here. Into the pot. And then Terry, I'll get you to measure out three and a half cups of the chicken broth. Okay. We'll add that. I'll break up this uh, coconut milk a little bit. It's coming together nicely. Once you heat it, it kind of comes back together. I think this is the second time we've actually used coconut milk on this show. I can't remember the other recipe, but. I don't guess I've ever cooked with coconut yeah. milk before. It's so. very Caribbean. Okay. Our uh, oven heated up to 350. That's the cue that it's ready. Three and a half cups for that. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. That is our wet ingredients. And now, if one of you guys wants to use this and measure out two cups of the cornmeal. Okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna let this get to boiling and then turn it down and simmer it until it thickens up nicely. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot. Yeah. It's gonna be almost full. Okay. We're making a lot of cornbread here. right on the dot. Sprinkle that in there. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. A couple pinches, because we're making a lot. Okay. Need a lot of seasoning. And I'm gonna get this incorporated. Again, we're gonna bring this to a boil. I'm gonna turn the heat up just a little bit. I'm also gonna add some parsley here in just a minute once we get it to boiling. And while we're doing that, 
why don't you guys tell us uh, kind of how you got to where you are today? I mean, and, and how your paths crossed. Okay. You want to go first, Mike? Go ahead, Terry. Uh, well, it started out, uh, I think we might, and when our first meeting, uh, I think we had maybe five people. Mm -hmm. um, and we uh, actually met on Thorn Road at the uh, Cracker Barrel. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then it grew to now, I think we might have 10 people mm -hmm. uh, involved with the uh, board. And uh, so it, it, it just kind of started mushroom. We started to get, uh, trying to get uh, my sister, George Cowell involved. Uh, uh, we got a couple of city council that's involved. And so we uh, slowly, you know, it's starting to, starting mm -hmm. to mushroom. Starting to come together. Mm -hmm. uh, and how, how did you, how did you decide to start this? What was the purpose of it? Well, like I said, I played, I played ball in Dominican, uh, two winners, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, it was very poor. You know, the parents, uh, you know, maybe a little over $6 a day. Uh, and I went to a couple of my teammates' houses, and some of them had dirt floors. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I used to see the kids that, you know, be out in the fields playing. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them didn't have gloves. They just used a uh, cardboard mm -hmm. for their glove. And so, uh, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, riding back and forth in the countryside of Dominican, I, I was just thinking, well, now how could I help these kids? Mm -hmm. uh, now, this is back in the early 80s. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's not changed quite a bit now, but uh, uh, I just always is a thought of just what can I do to help these kids, mm -hmm. and that's you know, and then when I met Kevin, uh, it turned out he was going over to Domin Dominican with his basketball guys, mm -hmm. and uh, and so we got to talking, and, and then we just um, come up with the uh, Infinity Sports connection. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of meant to be you guys crossing paths. Absolutely. I could just remember the days growing up as an athlete uh, in Cobb County and uh, and all the, I think about all the coaches that gave back to me over time and took out their time and uh, my both my parents were working parents. We weren't per se poor, but it, they struggled at times. Mm -hmm. And I think about all the coaches and individuals and people that gave back to us and, uh, and I was blessed by all these people. And we just, in our hearts when we, when we meet someone like Coach Keevy and Terry and other people that want to give back and and reach out to our young people and our youth, and mine began in uh, upward sports at my church at Central Baptist, and and then it overflows into Harvester Christian Academy and it overflows into the county. But uh, it's just about giving back. And number one, not everybody's going to be able to do like Terry and make it to the big leagues, but we can instill that hope, mm -hmm. that hard work, and an opportunity to help them mm -hmm. would be a blessing on them. Mm -hmm. So that's, and I met Coach Keevy through through basketball, mm -hmm. and uh, he's he's our chair he's our chairman, and he's he's a wonderful guy, mm -hmm. and he has a heart of giving back to the young folks. Mm -hmm. He does. So, who are some of the other people who are involved with the program? Let me see. We got um, uh, uh, training legends, uh, 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 Tammy, Cammy, uh, Luigi. Uh, she's uh, in charge of, you know, she's going to do the tournament for us. Okay. Um, we got uh, Councilman Sam Davis. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's a part. Um, we also have um, Pam. I think you know Pam. Mm -hmm. Pam Daly. Uh -huh, Pam yes. Daly. She's going to be involved. Mm -hmm. So it, it's us. Um, and hopefully we are going to continue to add more people as mm -hmm. we go. Because eventually we would like to not only add Dominican, but we would like to add other countries mm -hmm. in the Caribbean. That's uh, great. And I also played in Venezuela, uh, same situation over there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, then Curacao and Panama. So hopefully, mm -hmm. uh, that's why we, you know, uh, named it Tuna, uh, Tournament of, of America because we try to get all those teams, right. events to come over here. Right. So tell me uh, logistically, <clears throat> what does Infinity Sports Connection do? Uh, I know you guys have a tournament. So mm -hmm. how does that work? You guys bring kids over. Yeah, well, uh, but by Dominican first year, we trying to get those guys over. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna bring them over. Uh, we're gonna uh, have them, uh, even though the tournament is only two days, we gonna uh, have them over for, for about six days. Uh -huh. uh, we planning on uh, uh, the Braves. They're gonna be a part. They're gonna. Oh, cool. Uh, they're gonna uh, provide tickets for for the guys. Uh, 
They're going to let them come down and watch band practice. Uh, That's awesome. They're going to let them tour the stadium. Um, and um, they're, they're just going to have a good time. They're going to get them T-shirts and you know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then they also uh, we also want to try to take them down to Georgia Tech and let them see mm -hmm. the educational side oh, and see what the campus idea. is like. So, mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully, you know, because I know if, if it wouldn't be for uh, Infinity Sports Connection, um, these kids would never get this kind of opportunity. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, a lot of them probably never would get a chance to come to the United States. Right. So uh, it's uh, and, and it makes you feel good to be able to, uh, even though they, a lot of kids may not play baseball, but it might lead to something else. Right. So. Yeah. So you guys are kind of putting Douglas County on the map. This is a big deal for us. It really is a big deal for Douglas County. This is going to be one of the first major, major baseball tournaments mm -hmm. at Hunter Park. I mean, they have lots of tournaments go on there, mm -hmm. but with this many, this many teams and this many individuals involved, it, it's going to be a big deal. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So we're going from me seeing your picture at Hunter Park to <laughs> you hosting a tournament there with how many teams? Uh, 50, low 50s, 50, wow. 52, 53 teams. And That's eventually, awesome. hopefully as we grow, uh, we'd like to be 100, 200 teams. Uh -huh. so, Maybe uh, use some more parks all yeah, over Douglas all County. All over right. Douglas County. That's, right. that's the plan. That's great. <laughs> that is great. And that, you know, from a selfish side, having that large of a tournament in mm -hmm. Douglas County is great for our economy as well. Mm -hmm. It is. So, you know, that's a great reason to support this tournament, you know, awesome. even if, if you're thinking about it in the dollar signs. I mean, that's a great reason to support mm -hmm. this tournament and make it get larger and larger. Yeah, we, we uh, and, and like I was talking earlier, uh, you know, in the past it's either been Cobb or Gwinnett. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you never hear about Douglas County. So right. hopefully we can kind of get a little exposure because I grew up, uh, you know, grew up, uh, you know, I used to uh, hunt a park where, the, you know, where I got my uh, baseball experience. Mm -hmm. And I know it wasn't been for the culture that helped me out. Uh, mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't have ended up playing baseball because I, you know, I was just kind of drifting on. Yeah. Actually, my cousin <laughs> had to try to talk me into coming out to play. And I said, oh, I don't know. I'm glad yeah. he did. <laughs> yeah, I am too because <laughs> it turned out I ended up making the team and it turned out he was a year, uh, his birthday came when well, he was a little too old. So I ended up being the uh, only one playing. <laughs> and, he <didn't, laughs> and he taught me into coming out. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, speaking of supporting this great uh, project and and, uh, and organization, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in our next segment when we're cooking. Awesome. Uh, we're just about done with this. It's done I'm going to turn the heat smell. off. It is good. thickened up, as you can see. Uh, and now I'm just going to pour it into our baking dish. The... Uh, well, actually, I'm going to chop up a little bit of parsley to put in here. I got <laughs> listening to you guys and forgot to do my job. So we're just going to do a little bit of parsley. It's a nice color. Parsley doesn't really add a whole lot of flavor, but it will add a little bit of color. Awesome. And we're talking to these guys before the show, they said they don't have a whole lot of cooking experience. So our main goal today is uh, nobody gets hurt. I see you pull out that knife, Mike backed up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll stir this in. And get it put into the baking dish. This is gonna cook for uh, a decent amount of time, which is why I wanted to do this one first. It's gonna cook for about 30 to 40 minutes so that it'll set up nicely and we'll be able to cut it into squares and have with our stew that we're gonna make. All right. All right. I'm glad that pot is not hot because <laughs> I would be hurting right now. What's well, good we brought this out? Terry, it looks like it's enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure this, is, uh, this dish is from the Southern Dominican, mm -hmm. Southern part. All right, get this nice and spread out. And if you will, open up that oven for me. Okay. Again, this is going in for about 30 to 40 minutes. Get 
that in there, get the timer going. We'll throw it on for 30. And so one recipe down, we got one, one to, go, to go, and then we're gonna be eating. Awesome. awesome. That's the best part. That's what I do best. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. We got the cornbread in the oven, it's going. I've prepped a little bit for this next recipe. This is the Teota Guisada con Longanisa. I didn't remember that, I read it off the sheet right there. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing we're gonna have to do is brown some sausage, but I did not prep all of the vegetables that are going in so that we could take a look at this Teota, or Cheote as some other people call it. Um, it sort of has a look of a, a pear, and it's technically a squash. So, I don't know, it does have a pit, so mm -hmm. what I did was cut it right down the center and you take the pit out, right out of the middle. Right. And it's, it's relatively soft. I mean, it's not hard to cut mm -hmm. or anything. It's definitely like a pear. So yeah, it, it definitely has the consistency of a pear. Mm -hmm. And the way I've been doing it is cutting this part in half lengthwise, and then cut strips like this. Mm. You're like, you know what you're doing with that. <laughs> Not my first rodeo, but uh, this is definitely my first time working with this particular vegetable. Or I, it, it could be considered a fruit as well. Mm -hmm. Let's see. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a taste because you can eat it raw just like this. Mm. So you wanna taste? All right. I'd go for Be it. daring. Absolutely. And tell me what you think. What does it taste like to you? I don't I, nothing I have tasted. No. Nah. <laughs> yeah. The first time I tasted it, I said, I told my wife, I said, it tastes like when you're eating a piece of watermelon and you get close to the rind. That that that's close, yeah. The yeah. consistency of it and the taste of it, it, it just has that that bite, that same mm -hmm. sweet but not, mm -hmm. you know? I was expecting bitter and yeah. there was no bitter. Yeah, no so. bitterness at all. Mm -hmm. So we'll get this out of the way. Mm. Do either of you want to try to chop that one up? I guess you You're going to go shot, for it, right? huh? Mm -hmm. All right. And there's no wrong way unless you mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> Take that off of there. After watching you. There you go. You've been in, you've been in the kitchen, hadn't you, Terry? Oh, <laughs> don't play with us. <laughs> He's a ringer. All right. Nice. Whatever gets it done, right? Yeah, whatever it takes. You got it. <laughs> So we've got a red onion, we've got a uh, cubanelle pepper, and then we've got the uh, Toyota chopped up and ready to go. Before we put the vegetables in though, we want to uh, prepare our sausage, and that is chorizo, which is a pork sausage. It's got a little bit of a kick to it, a little spicy. And this is completely raw, so we, we do have to cook it uh, to get it, uh, we're gonna brown it and then it's gonna cook the rest of the way inside of the stew. Mm -hmm. Now this type of sausage is, um, you could actually take the casing off mm -hmm. and you could use it kind of like uh, breakfast sausage. Um, this is used in, in lots of different dishes. You can eat it just straight, you know, cook it in the oven or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is gonna come together nicely. All right, we got our sausage done. I'm gonna take the Toyota, put it over here out of the way. And we're gonna brown our sausage first before we add our other ingredients. Grab something to- That's a good sound. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, what kind of oil are you using? It's just olive oil. Olive oil, okay. Yeah. You can use any kind you want, really. So 
so we'll get this brown. Now, we talked a lot about the logistics of, of your uh, organization. Um, we haven't talked about really how you plan to raise your money or how you're doing that right now. So how does that all work? I know it probably takes a lot of money to make this happen. It does. We've had a, we've had a couple of small private donations, and, but we've put together a packet and uh, I've dropped it off at a couple of local businesses and uh, in my business I'm going to solicit my customers also but primarily what we're looking for is uh, Douglas County uh, uh, entrepreneurs and businesses to come on board because mm -hmm. this is going to be something for Douglas County and it's really just uh, us, us having faith that the money would will be there mm -hmm. and uh, that but we're, we've got off the ground with a some small donations from small companies That's here great. in Douglasville. So, but you're open to people just you know helping out in any way. That Absolutely, can, right? every every dollar uh, uh, would help because mm -hmm. uh, we believe that through our faith that you know God will multiply those multiply those dollars. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. And how do they get in touch with you if they want to donate? Well, we're going to have a we're going to be setting up a, a a web page which is set up already in. A, it's uh, infinitysports.com. Okay. Did I say that? Infinitysportsconnection.com? Infinitysportsconnection.com. That's it. And uh, we just got that up yesterday. Uh huh. And uh, there will be a place where uh, uh, local people and whoever wants to go on there and hopefully uh, get us off the ground to bring some Dominican kids and their families mm -hmm. here for the tournament in May. So, so are you guys actually. Uh, coordinating the tournament and getting that all set up or is that all in your hands? Well, we have this organization called Training Legend. Uh -huh. uh, that's what they do. They do tournaments uh, all across Georgia. Okay. And actually, they go up to Cooperstown and do a tournament. Oh, they nice. do some tournaments for the Braves. Uh, so they, 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 that's, this is what they do. They're good okay. at it. And um, uh, so they're going to... Uh, they're gonna run a tournament for us. Uh, they're gonna uh, solicit the, uh, the teams for us. Mm -hmm. So they pretty much all, all set up. So uh, that part, I, I feel like it's covered. That's you know, great. Really well. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Right. right. It is a mm -hmm. lot of work it to is. put on a tournament. Yeah, and do a good job of it. Yeah, when I was a kid, uh, I played soccer. And when I was probably about eight or nine, 10 years old, uh, the local association came up with an idea to do a girls tournament because there really wasn't any girls tournaments mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. Girls soccer wasn't that popular. Mm -hmm. So they started a tournament called Sugar and Spice. And that tournament turned into the biggest tournament, girls tournament in the Southeast. Wow. Mm -hmm. And it was pulling people from all over the nation. Oh, that's so awesome. yeah, I mean, they can blow up. They mm -hmm. can become really, really mm -hmm. big. Yeah, the, as Terry said, uh, the, train, the training legends now, they, it, it's, it's going to be a big tournament. Yeah, that's what that's what they do, and uh, and I think she told me that uh, they do seven nonprofit tournaments a year, but uh -huh. this will be their eighth. Okay, that she's going to add. She was very excited and and uh, very happy at the last meeting to be involved with this because she said there's really been, never been anything on the west side mm -hmm. uh, quite like this before, and she was very excited. Right, so. tapping into a, a whole new market over yes. here. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. that's great. Now we're going to get this brown, we're going to add in our vegetables, we're going to add in some tomato sauce, some garlic, some oregano, salt, pepper, and we're going to let it simmer. Uh, looks like we got a couple more minutes, maybe about 10 minutes, uh, I'll check, put the old toothpick in to see if it comes out clean on All the right. cornbread. <laughs> uh, but once we get everything in, in here, it'll simmer for about 15 minutes or so. That'll give our cornbread time to set up and cool down and we'll be ready to eat. All right. Y'all awesome. ready to do this? Yeah, oh, ready. I'm ready. All right, when we come <laughs> back, we're eating. We are to my favorite part of the show. Eating. All right. Hey, man. Man. We, get to, we get to sample some <laughs> of the fruits of our labor. Now, I told the guys before we came on that the cornbread did not exactly set up the way it's supposed to. Uh, the next time I do it, I will probably use a little less liquid 
and cook it a little bit longer, bake it a little bit longer so okay. maybe it'll come together. However, it is the consistency of grits, like I said, in the pot. It's almost like we didn't even put it in the oven. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had to lick my finger after I transferred <laughs> some of it, and it's good. So Awesome. It tastes is always right. good. So we got the stew, and we've got the grits, as we'll call them now. <laughs> uh, what do you want to try first? I'm going to go with the stew first. Let's do the stew. All right. It's got chorizo and tejota, or tejoti. At this point, I don't even know anymore. It's hot. It's probably a little hot. <laughs> mm. That's good it stuff. Is good. Mm -hmm. It almost has a chili taste. Mm -hmm. Like the mm -hmm. chorizo has added that little spice, so it's almost like chili. Mm -hmm. And you can't taste the teote, but it gives it a little bit of a crunch. So you've got the firmness. Mm -hmm. And I, I told our camera yeah. guy before we started rolling, I said, this is going to be much better tomorrow. Just like chili, how it comes up. together yeah. and just soaks in. That's good today. That's very good. Mm -hmm. That's a winner. All right, let's try these uh, cornbread grits. <laughs> cornbread grits. Mm. That pairs perfectly with the stew. That is good stuff That's right good. there. Good. That's good. I could just eat that yeah. for breakfast. <laughs> That's what I was actually thinking, a breakfast dish kind of. <laughs> some bacon, some of this. Mm. What's yeah. the other saying though? Bacon makes everything good, right? Exactly. That's like <laughs> cheating. Oh, that's good. So when we finish, we can continue uh, our eating. All right. So you guys, tell us again how we can get in touch with you in case uh, somebody wants to donate or uh, help out in any way. Uh, the web page would be infinitysportsconnection.com and um, uh, at the ground level we're at right now every dollar would help uh, for this uh, groundbreaking in tournament in Douglasville mm -hmm. and uh, we're excited about it and uh, we're uh, excited to see that the future sponsors and we've had um, some corporate verbal commits but uh, we believe that uh, through our faith and through our communications in Douglasville and around the world, we believe that this will happen. We do. Great. And, you know, for some people, seeing is believing, seeing the, the, the work that you've put in. So when is the tournament? How can they go and take a look at it? The tournament is May 18th through the 20th. Mm -hmm. I believe I have those dates right. We might have to. <laughs> we can check the website. Check the website. <laughs> but... Uh, um, but we might run into a, a few little logistical issues mm -hmm. uh, as far as getting the kids here. But uh, right now, I think we have it set for May 18th through the 20th. Okay, so and people can come out and watch. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, there, there's going to be. Uh, we're hopefully maybe even some food truck vendors there, awesome. and concessions will be there. So, and also not only that, uh, you know, those of you that's never been to Hunter Park, that's an awesome place just yeah. to. You want to watch a little baseball and then mm -hmm. walk around the track and uh, see the airplane, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Buzz Hunter's airplane, and uh, it's just a great place to come mm -hmm. out and ha have a family day. Yeah, it's changed a lot since I was a kid, but it's it's just gotten better. Yeah. We always had our baseball uh, banquets there. Must be. Yes. That was always a good time. Um, so we're so glad that you could be on the show today. and. Nobody got injured cooking, so I think that's successful. I think we made some pretty good food, too. Absolutely. Very, very good food. All right, Great so our, our goal here on this show is to get you connected, get you plugged in with your local community. Do something good in your community. Make it better. Absolutely. And if you want to, connect with these guys and uh, volunteer, donate, do what you can. If you don't do it with them, do it with somebody. We'll see you next month.